Hi, it's Abby, and um, I wanted to kind of piggyback off of my um, video that I made about depression, and I had a comment on it. Um, it said, uh, do you believe suicide is part of the creation process? And I think um, it's really good to talk about, um, about suicide and um, what that means in the spiritual sense of it. Because as human beings, you know, we, you, you know, it's, it's suicide is a very bad thing, and um, it's very poor, it looked upon poorly. And seeing as I was raised a Catholic, um, you go to hell if you commit suicide. You can't commit suicide; you're going to burn in hell for eternity. So don't. Doesn't matter how terrible your life is. Do not kill yourself because it's just going to get worse. So that's actually. Um, you know, I'm going to have the spirit world help me with this because I'm not going to do it, like, perfectly. I mean, I've contemplated this for so many years, so I already have um, a response to it. But I want to make sure, too, that I um, incorporate the spirit world. So, okay, they're telling me that um, just to go ahead with what I was going to say. So, um, all right, so, so, to, so, okay, so a soul comes and inhabits a body. A soul comes and explores um, a lifetime here. The soul wants, the whole purpose of this is to actually to, to learn something. If, if all you ever knew was literally, you know, being a starving child in Africa, what do you really know about creation? You just know one tiny little fragment of creation. If all you knew is um, to have all the money in the world and have servants and, you know, a large house. and I mean, what truly do you know about creation, about life, about existence? You don't. You only know a very tiny, tiny little fragment. And that's what the whole point and the whole purpose of reincarnation is, so that you can expand as a soul. You can you can see, even visualize as a human being. You relate to this. You can imagine a soul who has been a starving child in Africa, and a soul who's been like you know a Kardashian. Like the the soul expands as it continues to explore lifetimes. It expands and it gets more wise. It gets more understanding. More it develops more um, awareness. And it's just like in one lifetime, how many experiences have you had that have changed you? And you look back and you think, oh my God, I don't know how I got through that. Or you look back and you say, well, I'm, you know, I wouldn't be the person I am today if that wouldn't have happened. You know, see, even in one lifetime, one lifetime, our experiences actually expand us and make us even more brighter than we were before. And so you have to be um, honoring and respectful toward every single human being because we are all going through something, um, some um, exploration. It's a soul exploration. I mean, how it's, uh, this is, I'm very, very sensitive about this, but, um, you know, people who have weight issues and um, severe, severe weight issues, I mean, they can't hide that in public. And how many people, you know, drive by and point fingers and, I mean, that is a soul in that body actually exploring something, a profound exploration, and they're doing it for all of us. They're actually exploring that um, challenge in a way that is not only a physical, like everybody on this planet sees it, um, and then in their human ego has a re response to it, which is absolutely terrible. And then um, also um, in the spirit realm, all the souls uh, who are all connected as one, literally, there there is no separation, there's only oneness. And all the souls get to explore that um, that um, experience too. They get they get to comprehend that um, that get it's a gift to all soul, souls. Everything that we do is a gift to all souls. People don't see it that way. And um, and so um, I'm talking about suicide um, because sometimes, um, especially on this planet, you have to remember as human beings, we have an extremely humongous margin of emotion. Um, and in that margin of emotion, I mean, literally, you can be an infinite. We, you can do all kinds of things here on this planet. You can be so many different expressions. You have so many different feelings about things. And just the feelings that we have um, as human beings alone are so make it so much more challenging. We are seriously a very unique species in the universe. We don't see that about ourselves. We see ourselves as dumb and not very advanced. What you know? We, that actually that. There's so much more going on. There's so much more going on. We don't realize that we're actually slaves and imprisoned here, and we aren't given um, the sustenance we need to be aligned with who and what we actually truly are. We're not. Um, we're we're not as you think we are. 
And um, so, in other, I'm just going to tell you this: on other planets, that this this is very a very unique thing that human beings endure here is um, the the severe suffering, um, and the and because we're all in the same boat here, all human beings are dealing with the ego, all human beings are dealing with the voices in their head that are telling them, you know, what to say or what to do that makes them feel better about themselves and puts other people down. Or I mean, we're all all dealing with this we all are and some of us don't our souls are some souls are not um, developed or expanded um, enough in the awareness to actually be respectful towards others you just don't know because they haven't seen the other side of the fence yet hard enough to get it and um, and so when it comes to suicide like that that is there are alien beings, for instance, souls that inhabit alien bodies. Those bodies, the spectrum of emotions are different. The spectrum of awareness is different. They don't have, they, you know, alien bodies are of such a variety and so many that, um, you know, ego right now is extremely a part of um, our humanness. And um, alien beings, they can be as sort of um, extraordinarily like robotic in their th way of thinking that it, it is sort of like oh my god I'm so glad I have emotions because you feel like you are a robot you feel like you have um, you're just scanning analyzing data and um, and that is your comprehension of the infinite universe that is it and um, there I mean there's other beings that are there they know they only feel extreme love and that's it they don't know, I mean, they know. They're so advanced and so aware they know what suffering is. They, they see it. They um, explore it by leaving their body and going to other worlds and seeing what exists there. And um, they remember it through the, because they have awareness of all their past lives. And they have this expanded ability because of the body they inhabit. The body they inhabit allows them to have all of this awareness. So they can't be overweight. They can't be um, struggling with money because they don't live in a society where money exists because money is such a part of the ego, it's such a part of the very low, you know, this the humanness that we experience here. And so I'm talking about suicide, <laughs> sorry, I'm trying to give you awareness of what else all exists out there and why it is, um, why it is a very unique sort of experience for the earth because the earth experiences are very hard um, especially right now in this sort of t day and age but it's been hard for years and years and years and years on this planet it's been very hard it's been so many cycles of changes and so little awareness of the real the real reality that exists out there then as more people are on the planet and more people find ways of connect there's anyway I'm going to just hone into this whole thing because I want to talk about suicide and I'm, I'm part, I part sometimes you have literally you have to build the tree and you have to create the branches to create the whole tree doesn't have just one branch I can't just talk about one thing like I have to talk about many things and then I create the tree you know of of oneness and understanding and so um okay so so people want to know what happens if you commit suicide and um, what happens literally is your soul has a contract, it has an agreement, it, it is choosing to give this um, gift to, um, to the universe and it's choosing to expand itself um, and its awareness and, um, and it wants to endure whatever pain and suffering it, it will endure to get itself to a point that it has to make a choice whether it will continue in this lifetime or try to explore in other lifetimes. Um, this is very monumental, the spirit world says that you do not give up in this lifetime. <clears throat> you, your soul will, it, the soul does sort of experience what is um, a grief or a, um, like a sense, I, I can only, soul does not, the soul does, is not in suffering or in pain, but it does feel a sense of, um, like it didn't, it didn't satisfy, it didn't, I can only describe it as grief. It actually feels like a sensation of grief or disappointment in itself when it becomes part of the oneness and the awareness and it um, it happens instantaneously and then the soul um, it is aware of what its choice is to commit suicide and um, it is aware that now 
that every that that soul in that body that would have impacted an entire planet without even realizing it, and to impact an entire universe without even realizing it, that soul now has to endure the fate um, that is um, its choice to literally take the block out of the Jenga and then hope that the Jenga pile doesn't, you know, it, it is, every single person is that important. Every single one of us is literally that important. We don't feel or see how important we really are. And um, do not be the Jenga piece that you take out and now how, who will be that Jenga piece? Who? Who will be it? Without you. You have to be the Jenga piece. We need you to be the Jenga piece and we need you to stay where you are. We need you to get through this thing. Human beings need to know that there are people who want to help them. There are people who love them and care. And, um, and don't do it. And um, if you do it, then um, now suddenly your incarnations are um, going to be, uh, based on whatever the decision was to kill yourself, they will be a learning experience. This, you know, I, I'm telling you the hardest part about suicide, but suicide also comes with um, a, a gift and a blessing of its own. It, it, is, it is the blessing of um, those who love that soul, learning how to accept that severe loss. It is, um, so that is the gift that suicide gives. <clears throat> but um, it also gives a gift to the soul who chooses to commit suicide and it will be um, a very long um, string of incarnations and um, that those incarnations are going to be um, to explore the decision making to explore the decision making so that the next time around you can know why it's so important that you do not commit suicide it is so important and you will have to relearn your own lessons you'll have to do it again and you will have to not commit suicide Th this is part of the circle and I'm part of the I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about a very important part that important part is a karmic experience and um, sometimes so I, I'm talking about souls who are have um, um, the ability to actually choose to explore a very challenging lifetime just to challenge the soul itself it has nothing to do with a karmic sort of band where they have to they have to um, to pay the debt they actually souls actually get to a phase where they um, they want to incarnate in very challenging roles um, just for the expansion for the awareness for the experience for all that stuff and um, sometimes the challenge is too much and then the soul can't tolerate it so it kills itself like well the body does in the body the soul chooses to end the lifetime before it is supposed to be completed and then now the soul has to explore all the the, the reasons for the decision making and it has to rebalance itself that creates a karma um, so that's special a soul that actually explores a hard lifetime that it could create a karmic sort of response so it can explore even more lifetimes to sort of um, get the need the knot out you know it, it souls are trying to find the challenges where they want to overcome those challenges become even brighter even more um, of a wise soul even more expanded even more aware um, so you, some souls pick lifetimes like that but then sometimes you actually endure a karmic experience um, of what is a nightmare and um, it is so severe, the um, karmic debt, that you can't tolerate it. And um, I've endured um, karmic debt before, I'm well aware of, um, of what that experience is like. Um, and many <laughs> spirits like spirits like this. So this, your karmic debt just is like <laughs> this. Is, my soul has endured so much, and it has explored so much karmic debt that it's not. It's not like karmic debt of this size. It's like you have actually cleared out karmic debt that just keeps growing and growing and growing and growing, like like across this this room, and then some. Like my soul's expanded awareness is so is so monumental. That's sort of um, what the spirit world is showing me that my karmic debt that I have experienced and explored and um, have healed is like blowing through the walls and um, and so so the, this one memory that I have is not even close to what I have um, experienced as a means to heal all sorts of um, challenges my soul has endured and um, what would be hurt others or hurt myself or 
um, made choices that I needed to go and um, learn to become better so that I understood what other people's feelings were. I mean, you can't, you can't be, um, you can't live a lifetime and be a princess and, um, and treat your servants like crap. You, then now you get to be the servant and know what it's like to be treated like crap. You know what I mean? By somebody else who has money and then you will despise this. I mean, it is part of the soul learning. It is part of it. Um, so I'm going to tell you this lifetime. So, um, what had inspired it was, um, uh, I gotta get, I'm thirsty, so I'm just gonna stop this and come right back. Okay, I'm back. Now I can tell you the story. But I gotta drink a little bit more water. <laughs> mm. ah, I needed that. I needed that. Okay. Um, so, so um, we'll talk about... So I had this lifetime where um, I was an alien being. This is what I did to inspire the karmic debt. So as an alien being, I was abducting humans. And um, I was um, a lizard. And I did not... Um, I'm, not, I'm actually... It's quite um, sort of... I'm sort of like hearing from the spirit world, but I don't know what they're saying. Um, they're, they're part of the. Oh, I hadn't had the. I hadn't um, brought them back into. I hadn't. I haven't given it a chance for them to reconnect with me since I left. Is what this is. Okay, so now they're part of me, um, a part of the um, wisdom that I'm sharing. So they're telling me to go along with what I'm sharing. Okay. Um, okay, so. So I literally was um, a reptilian being and um, taking human beings from the planet and having sexual experiences with them. And um, this was extremely delightful for me and I didn't, um, at my awareness, my consciousness, my um, mentality, my natural instincts were not to comprehend um, how I was hurting others. It wouldn't allow me. I, I instinctively didn't um, relate to that at all. I just related to the sexual need and then that um, human beings were a very sort of delicious sexual experience and that is all I could relate to. And um, there was one f moment over, uh, you know, I, this would have been lots and lots and lots and lots of, um, ex of these ex sexual experiences that I was having um, where I had a moment where I actually sort of had a moment where I, I saw differently. I had a, a perception um, change and I noticed that um, I was actually hurting this person that I was um, interacting with and I, I it was sort of like startling to me because I'd not seen that before. Um, but because of obviously my um, the joy of the experience, and then it suddenly became rape, is what it was. It wasn't rape until the moment that I had the awareness that I was actually raping people. And I couldn't have, it was, it was a weird moment of clarity. And um, I, would, I still didn't stop. I, I um, and just, the experience um, was too joyful and I would, and, and, and I chose to not be compassionate or to care about that person's feelings. So that was what inspired the karma, was that. And uh, so, in the next lifetime, um, what I endured was um, a severe nightmare, where I get to be on the other side of the fence, but um, 10,000 times worse. Even I um, think, you know, universe, that was like, I think that was too harsh. <laughs> But um, that's karma for you. That's why you should always be kind to others. That is why you should, because karma is a nightmare. Karma is the nightmare. It is hell beyond hell. So in the next lifetime, I was um, a young girl and lived in South America in a jungle. And um, they're sort of going through um, what are changes and um, some, some war or some uncomfortable um, visitors are constantly coming through the village. And as I grew older, um, there's a moment where they wanted to purchase me, and my father would not allow it. Well, they killed my father. They took me and my mother, and um, we were taken literally to um, what was like a sexual, what would be like a sexual prison. And on along the way to the sexual prison, we were raped repeatedly. And there was nothing we could do about it. I mean, we're talking hundreds of times by multiple men, and um, and it was abusive, and it was a nightmare, and it was terrible, and there was nothing we could do about it. 
Absolutely nothing. There was no committing suicide in this lifetime. There was none. And so once we got to the sexual prison, which is where we were, um, were for, let's just say, 10 or 15 years, and my mother died before the end, but I survived, um, they, in this sexual prison, we would be put on display, me and my mother and many other, several, you know, what would be like eight other women or whatever, we would go out and um, just in... It would just be a show, basically, for anybody who wanted to watch a sexual show. And um, and so we were forced to have sex with animals, forced to have sex with alien beings, forced to have sex with um, giant lizards um, from the jungle uh, that were not um, actual animals, but actually had um, like what would be a consciousness of awareness that was more than animal. And... Uh, we were forced to take a um, drink so that we would um, black this out, so that at least we had that element of compassion. Um, but when, so then when we would come to, our bodies would be so sore and they would be bleeding and we would be in such terrible pain, all of us. And we weren't given much um, in the way of um, nurturing or love or, um, you know, there wasn't, it was, a, it was a prison, it was a cell, it was not warm or, um, I mean, it was just, the love, there was no love at all. It was, it was, I, we were pieces of meat um, there to be put on a sex show and it didn't matter what our feelings were. And, um, and so uh, my mother and I, just to, so that we could figure out what was going on, chose not to take the drink one time, um, which is when we discovered the truth, and um, which was coming through in our dreams. We were dreaming about um, the memories that we had blacked out um, of the, you know, giant um, lizard beings and the um, aliens that would come and um, partake in these ceremonies. And then um, the... Uh, the ma the ma bunches of men who would um, it would be it was a super sex show and then we'd have sex with animals I mean they force us to so that is what you get you see that is what you get when you um, choose to rape somebody or you know that that is that is part they're telling me that my soul um, so expanded even at the time that um, that event took place. Um, and that it was it was the ins the instinctive body that I inhabited did not have um, the ability. But what um, triggered the perception or awareness was actually the star of um, there was a warm sun inside my soul that actually helped me to perceive what um, what is love and what is not love in a different way than would have been um, aligned with the actual physical body. And they're saying that that was sort of a mag magnanimous, a monumental, super um, moment in the universe even, that spirit world actually got to see this take place, that um, I defied my physical form, to, in that my soul, my soul actually defied my physical form, um, to show the physical form something new that it had not seen before. And my soul did that, is what they say, because my soul, even at that point, had so much of an expanded awareness that that, that is what it can do. And, um, and I talk a little bit about this in my depression videos, to how I um, was able to override um, what is depression and how depression builds up and um, makes it impossible for love to come in. The soul actually possesses so many memories of love that I was able to override that sensation to want to kill myself because of the love that is um, contained in all of my past life memories. And... Um, and so they said that that was actually an extremely beautiful moment in the universe that my soul overrided my physical form and then gave my um, gave myself, uh, my soul and my physical form, I mean it was sort of a, one, a moment of oneness where um, I, show, I ch got the ch chance to choose, choose a destiny, to choose if I wanted to continue or if I wanted to stop. And I chose to continue, even though I now had an awareness, an expanded awareness that really was not actually a part of my physical form to have that. And they say that the reason why that um, the re karmic response was so terrible um, related to that was because my soul was so expanded that it had to be that terrible so that the basically the impact of it would be strong enough 
would hit the gong hard enough that it would vibrate through me so hard um, that it would never be forgotten. And that no matter what body I would inhabit, I would always have this memory and I would always know better the next time I was able to override my physical form, my soul was able to override my physical form. And that's why it had to be that terrible, they say. They say that um, your soul is at different levels of awareness and that um, that the impact of karma is is suitable in relation to the age of your soul and um, to the to what it, it is suitable, they say. Um, and um, they're really, really pushing me to just feel really proud of myself for everything my soul has um, achieved in all of my lifetimes. And um, even they're, they're showing me so much love and even so being this reptilian being who took human beings and raped them. They're actually sharing so much love with me and my soul's choice to actually choose to inhabit that body and experience that. They say that human beings will see this as, as an ugly thing and um, in the infinite universe there's so much reverence and respect for every lifetime that is um, ex in existence and human beings do not perceive it that way. They, they say that, um, so as I'm talking about human beings who are challenged with um, you know, weight issues, they're saying that that is, um, they're telling me that that is like a very huge um, issue that exists um, here in my country, for instance. Um, and let me see what else they, so they're telling me, okay, <clears throat> hold on. They're saying that that is, that is very similar to what I, um, being an outcast of society, a soul that chooses to explore the ch a challenge that they, they actually have a choice of whether or not they will eat the food or not and then they still continue to um, um, be aligned with the behavior that creates that form um, that creates the sensation of literally being an outcast of society and um, they say that um, this is very m interesting but they're I trying to figure out how the world I'm going to translate the message because it is so not um, what I was just talking about. It's very different. Um, the reason why souls choose that sort of experience is um, not what I had thought it would be. Um, let's see. So I'm going to try and make sense of this for us all so we all can learn from this. Um, this is very weird. Uh, I wasn't expecting this. Now I'm going to get all spacey and um, I'm going to have to take time to really understand because the feelings and the sensations are extremely different than what I was just feeling. And so now I have to alter my sort of center of gravity to try to make sense of completely new energetic sensations um, that are um, sort of washing over me. They're telling me that they're, they are helping me to alter my vibration so that I can comprehend the message. That I am not in a state of being that is able to yet. And they're showing me the color yellow, very vividly the color yellow, as a means to alter my vibration. They're showing me too um, how colors are um, very effective in altering our vibrations in ways that we aren't, we don't give colors enough credit for. <clears throat> They're showing me that um, those human beings who are in that state of being deserve a hug, and um, instead they are sort of slandered as being um, sort of um, um, a very just dis disappointing part, of, like a very disagreeable view, a very um, un uh, like a view that nobody wants to see and, um, um, and, and they are tormented um, because they can't control the behavior and so they desperately want to um, feel a relief or release or some sort of simplicity so that they can, um, can change this and they say these souls are, are in these bodies learning um, something very very important um, about society and about um, consumption, about the, f the human ego, um, which is literally, they at every turn have a choice, and at every turn the choice is never, the, the, cho the hardest choice they can make is the one that will relieve all them of all of their pain. It is very similar to depression and the fact that um, the choice to experience love and to embrace love is not there. It is just 
it is inhib it is not allowed it is not the depression itself creates sort of like a thick mask over the brain and it will not allow love to penetrate into it and it only allows you to sort of fuel um, in a more acidic um, painful and endure more of a painful emotional experience and they're saying that that is the nightmare that they too are enduring is the nightmare that um, is a gift that they could give to themselves to choose to do it differently but the disease of um, the, the, it literally is a disease, an eating disease and it prevents them from, um, it is so hard to overcome it that it actually prevents them from making the correct choice. It is very hard for them to make the correct choice, they say. That is very similar to depression in that way, is that it is very hard to make the correct choice. And, and then they have to live with that um, every single day, that they are not strong enough to make the correct choice, and everybody points it out. In depression, you don't, um, people don't always see that, um, that you're going through that. And, um, and in depression, you have the nightmare of you want people to see what you're going through, but nobody will. And so it makes you feel even more alone and hate yourself even more and hate the world even more. Um, when it is just part of the disease, it is literally part of the disease. Um, they say that I'm talking about all these things for a very good reason because it's the human beings don't really acknowledge how hard life is here on earth and all of the array of challenges are lived and that we endure because of the shape of our society and the way society inspires us to behave is um, so out of balance and out of whack that it actually um, pushes us to make decisions that are very self-destructive because society itself is is its own version of self-destruction society is and we see the version of self-destruction in society because um, the earth is dying and that, that there are wars and we are killing each other there are human beings suffering with literally obesity suffering with depression suffering with um, lit just um, this kids literally kids living in on the street having to band together and kill other kids who live on different streets because it, it is a strange protection issue. It is, there's so many issues that are on this planet right now and only love actually hugging each other, loving each other, choosing not to embrace hatred, choosing not to embrace the self-destructive energy, but actually choosing to embrace the creation and the love energy is what alters everything here. <clears throat> and they're saying so trying to tie this back to, um, I've talked about so many subjects and I didn't even know I was going to talk about half of these things, um, but uh, they, say, they say that every single human being needs to love themselves far more than they do, and, um, and even I, to see that my, see the mistakes I've made in other lifetimes, and even I as a human being try to analyze and comprehend the choices that I've made, um, I very find, I find it very hard even to accept some of the things that I've learned. Um, I feel very sad inside about them, and they're telling me um, that even I need to love myself for because all of our experiences are a gift. The nightmares and the beauty and the joyful and the peaceful and the and the terrible and the all of, all of the different experiences are a gift. They literally are, and a gift of love. Even even terrorists killing other human beings is an exploration of a life. Even that is. Um, they say that um, that they're so. They're telling me that I've um, I'm really worn out, and that is okay for me to uh, to come to a close on this video. And they want to remind you that suicide is a unique experience of its own, and nobody. And nobody um, in the universe, no soul, um, no soul thinks less of you or um, thinks negatively of you. And souls understand this. We live in an infinite universe. Suicide is um, an experience that souls have, and um, is very uh, like a sad sort of thing that happens because people don't see the ripple effect they have when they choose to end their life prematurely, and <clears throat> and they have that soul has to learn. Um, whatever the decision, I mean, for instance, like if you're in Columbine and, and you just killed a bunch of other kids and now you can't live with what you've just done and you don't want to go to prison for the rest of your life so you kill yourself, that is an example of committing suicide that has its own unique um, sort of exploration in the next lifetimes of the learning, of the learning. 
of what your choices and behaviors are. And we can't judge anybody for their actions because we don't know what they were going through. We don't know what inspired it. We don't know... Um, there's so much treachery out there beyond our human comprehension more so than we could even imagine see even manipulation um, by human beings from alien beings and we don't know um, all the reasoning for everything that takes place and we have such a need to be judgmental and to put ourselves on a pedestal of what we think is you know we got you know whatever our ego is you know in comparison to another when we really need to just embrace and love everybody and not be judgmental. And um, there are other suicide issues where that um, they're affected by sort of the depression issue, um, which was an onset of um, a series of very painful events. Um, and that there's also sort of a suicide issue, which is, um, you know, it's it related to sort of maybe you lost um, the love of your life and now you can't live anymore, and so you kill yourself. I talk about this one. There's a past lifetime with um, where Avery, the human alien, was a human being on this earth, and we lived in France together. And I, I'll um, create like a card or something so you can listen to it. It's really hard. It was really hard for me to make that video because it's always hard for me to talk about Avery because his energy is so strong. And whenever I talk about him or think about him, I can feel his energy. He knows. He can hear me thinking and talking about him. So his energy sort of overwhelms me. Um, but I made that video to talk about suicide and um, why that was a really bad choice because it separated our souls from incarnating together for many, many lifetimes. So his learning was literally, um, so basically in that lifetime, just to sum it up, you know, we fell in love on the vineyard. He was basically a vineyard um, sort of um, worker in the field, and then I was a super um, rich young girl that um, was visiting family that owned the vineyard and um, so we sort of met and then fell in love on the vineyard and it was discovered and um, he basically lost his job and um, was removed from the vineyard so he had he did not have um, the love of his life he did not have a job he had no home he had nothing and um, then I was removed and taken back to my home which was very rich family and to discover that I was pregnant um, and that was um, superiorly bad, so um, I was basically disowned and forced to go back to the vineyard only to find that um, my love was um, dead. He had killed himself because he could not tolerate the grief um, of his experience. And then now I had to live with the grief of um, have all of the loss that I have endured without him on top of it. And so that was, um, I needed him, I, that was terrible. That is why you don't kill yourself. You just don't. You, because you don't know what tomorrow holds. You just don't know what tomorrow holds. That's literally the truth. And Avery then had, um, his soul then had to live with the reality that if he wouldn't have killed himself, we could have lived a very happy life together. And, um, and then he had to incarnate many lifetimes without um, incarnating with my soul. So the separation was so much worse. And um, only for him to now inhabit an alien body on another planet and me inhabit a human body and he can't he had to see me suffering with depression and want to kill myself and there's nothing he could do with it, do about it you see see how karma is you see his soul is so super duper as well super old ancient soul expanded um awareness and um so so the the gift that you give um is um the the, I mean, he gave a gift to the universe, and the choice was suicide. And that is a gift he gives to himself, his own soul. And then the exploration um, of learning that comes after that is very difficult and very painful. And it teaches you not why suicide is a very bad um, decision. So you can ex choose to kill yourself and explore that um, that route, um, or you can choose to hang on and hang in there and not do it because, um, you don't know what tomorrow holds. There's so many reasons why you don't want to do it. Um, so I'm just going to call this a video now. I've talked about a lot of different things and, um, and so I'm just, uh, that's all, um, on this video. So thank you for sharing that comment. And, um, I think making videos about depression and suicide are really good, especially as they relate to reincarnation and karma. And um, people don't really know a whole lot about that. 
and so I'm still learning about it, you know. So, um, so that is all that I have to share with you today, and um, I hope you found this video to be meaningful and um, useful. So, thank you for watching.